Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is the heated stir plate video. I'd hope to do this a little later down the road, but I need heated stir plates and I need them now. We're looking to do 15 quick yeast beers compared to each other by simply using different yeasts. So I need the heated stir plates. You've probably seen this rodeo before. We've done it before. The key is people said it was extremely long because I went over all the things not to do and things that people tell you to do. Uh, or pain in the butt and waste of time. So we're gonna skip that, cut to the chase. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and thank you again for all the sharing and support. It's been huge, definitely appreciate it. Very simple, if you're doing quake yeast, you need stir plates, or at least I would recommend them, and a lot of people out there would recommend them, but you need heated stir plates. You don't want it to be stirring up cold, it's not gonna pump like it needs to. You wanna keep it up around 85 to 95 or even 100. I do mine at about 95 Fahrenheit on the starters and the next morning they're looking great and boom, pitch whatever I decide to pitch and I'm rocking and rolling. So first thing, keep this moving. You need a multi-fan series. I'll put a link down below to everything you need and where you can get it. This stuff is very inexpensive and does an amazing job. So right here, pop this bad boy open. It's for cooling audio equipment. Chuck what you don't need, don't big, no big deal. You're gonna need Gel, super glue. If you got some laying around the house, it won't cost you anything extra. Hopefully you own a Phillips screwdriver. Razor blade preferred, knife will work. And if you or your uh, significant other are into crafts, you probably have some earth magnets. I got four there and I'm not sure how the hell I'm gonna get them apart, but they're earth magnets. You want good quality ones, which I'll make sure to put a link to those. And of course you're gonna need some stir bars if you don't already have them. Other thing, mason jars. They work just great. I mean, you don't need to go crazy and buy all kinds of fancy flasks. So I'm going to take this apart. We'll jump ahead after I take it apart. And all I'm doing is literally taking these fans, just so you know, leave everything in here. Don't throw anything away. You might need this. I'll show you why. Take off the grills. I'm going to take the grill on the front and the back. So all you have is two fans connected with a USB and no grills. So go ahead and take those off. Keep in mind, these are USB fans. So you can use them in any country as long as you have something like this. It's a little power adapter I bought and I'll put a link down below. It just runs up to four USB devices and another plug, which is nice. So you can put your heat on here if you want or like I have it, I have it plugged into the surge protector. And I got my four USBs. These do allow for daisy chaining. Don't do it. You're gonna need the full five volts that comes from the USB. So there's the daisy chain, don't daisy, don't daisy chain them. The five volts is just enough to run both of the 120 millimeter fans at low to medium speeds at the correct. If you go to high, uh, the stir bar goes flying off. So number two, as you can see, this is the box that came in. You're gonna use the box. The first two I have, I bought back in July, 2017, and I've been using them since then. I mean, they're over three years old. I haven't had a single problem. I got a little staining on some of the cardboard, but other than that, it's fine. What you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to cut some cardboard. So I've already pre-cut some so you can see it. And the reason I cut one piece off the front here, you can cut it off another piece, it doesn't matter. And you're gonna use this to measure, if you need to measure. And this is rectangle, use the highest point because that's how it was in here. And what it's doing, it's creating a bridge, that bridge, is gonna hold this top of the cardboard up so you get that little bit of space above the magnets that you need so it's not touching, okay? You're gonna to to cut two other pieces of cardboard that are gonna go under the fans to give them a little bit of lift, to lift them up off the bottom. So after you take the feet, the little feet off the top and bottom, and you take the little grills off, go ahead and put the feet back on the bottom and only on the bottom and I'll show you. The bottom is where it's flat and smooth. The blades are on top. So you want the feet on the bottom. And I know what you're thinking. If you put the little feet on top, you won't need this little strip. They're too high. They're gonna give you too much space. You don't want that. Take your razor blade. Like I said, you don't have to use this piece for your uh, middle wedge to keep the top of the cardboard elevated. Get another piece of cardboard from something else. This cardboard is a little on the thinner side, although I did use it for the first two I ever did. Okay, 
The reason you cut this out is you're gonna need, and you may even want to cut a little piece here, the cords have to come out. You have no choice. So then all I'm gonna do, taking two pieces of cardboard that fit inside, I put them inside. I take the fans, I put them inside with the cord hanging out. There we go. There we go, yep, perfect. So, now we have to glue the magnets on. Seems like the hardest part, but it's really the easiest part if you follow the right steps. A little bit of crazy glue, super glue, whatever. Gel, the gel works the best for what we're going to do. Okay, take your stir bar, and you put one magnet on one end, and feel for the polarity, that's the key. It's the polarity. You wanna make sure you have the correct polarity, otherwise you're gonna have two and one's gonna be throwing it up. So. Get your polarity where you can have two magnets, one on both sides and the stir bar sticking, okay? Set that down, take one off. Just leave it so you don't mess it up. Get your glue ready. I think on this one, all I gotta do is tighten it down and I think it just starts coming out. With my luck, it'll be all over my fingers. If you mix up your polarity before you glue it on, double check. It's better to double check than, you know, what's that, measure twice? Do it once. After that big old mess, if that didn't come out, I'd be really upset. I mean, you might not want to buy these little tiny ones. They don't seem to have much in it, although, you know, most of it probably did end up on my hand. And do not glue your finger to the piece. Okay, look at that. Okay. Do the second one. Same thing, the bottom. Chances are, if you're doing this, you will get a little bit of super glue on your fingers. So acetone, paint, paint remover, or good quality fingernail polish remover. Let it dry. Your fan should be spinning just fine, no problems. Should just buzz like that. Beautiful. On these, there is a low, medium, and high speed. The high speed for me never works. The high speed will send the stir bar flying. Start off on zero or O, go to low, start spinning up, and then go to medium and you should be good. Also, make sure that the stir bar is centered because you can really move these mason jars or whatever you have just about anywhere so the stir bar could be off centered, should we say, or your jar is gonna be off centered. Okay, I'll speed it up. We're gonna glue the second one. Okay, this stuff should dry very quickly. Once it's dry, you're done. I mean, ta-da. I'm gonna kick these on here real quick just to show you. We'll go low, low, medium, medium. And if you're doing one of these heat pads, which is right here, it's a 20 watt heat pad. Yeah, it's from China. I don't know if you get them anywhere else, but hey. And I usually do six to eight ounce on mine for my starters, but these are both 12 ounce, I did 12 ounce liquid just to show you it can handle more liquid, it's not a big deal. So I could probably almost fill the mason jar. The nice thing with this 20 watt is that, and this is why you want, you can get a smaller one, make sure it's got enough power, but I mean, worst case you gotta hang off. I think this was like, I don't know, 10 bucks plus or minus. So it's got a little dial and that dial allows me to turn up the heat or turn down the heat. That's the key. And if you have something like, just about everybody nowadays has some sort of a point and shoot, you can take temp. Worst case, you let the liquid sit in there and you put a glass thermometer and you see where it is. We're doing instant read and you figure it out. But I'll show a video. Right now it's sitting at 97, 97, 95, 96, showing where I took a temperature on the video and everything. But when you put foil over it, it will get warmer and keep that in mind. The foil helps keep the heat in. So you may need to you know, adjust the temperature a few times first hour just to get it to where you want it and then let it rock and roll. I mean, boom. I was doing up to 101 in a room with an AC blowing almost right on it at 72 Fahrenheit. And I dropped mine down, like I said, down to 95 and they were cranking away overnight the next day. Boom, big yeast starters. So super simple. Now I've got four, four, I've got eight stir plates. I know that's a lot for most people, but for me, I've got to do 15 yeast tomorrow, so that's uh, not even quite just a hair over half. 
I need 15, so I'm gonna do some, rotate them, and do another batch. So that'll get it going. I'll leave links down below for the right stir bars or the type of stir bars that I recommend because the bigger ones seem to do a lot better than the smaller ones. Also, I'll leave a link for these, some good quality earth magnets, the heating, you can get any reptile heating thing, although the 20 watt has worked great for me. I mean, and I know they probably have these available for 220 in other countries, so that shouldn't be a big deal. This is on USB. I'll leave a link to the little USB adapter I use, which supports up to four stir bar systems and plug this one in just so we can see it crank up. And there it goes. I guess I already had it on. Yeah, I had it on medium. It's spinning away. It's all good. Blowing a little air on my face feels good. All I can smell is super glue fumes. So that's it. Super simple, super cheap, very durable. They are cardboard, so pouring water over them probably would not be recommended, but super easy. And be careful with the super glue. What a pain in the neck. I think the razor blade's dangerous. The super glue is the worst. Thank you again. Thank you for joining us at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. And like I said, if you have any questions too, when you if you decide to buy some of this stuff off Amazon, I'm gonna leave the links down below or wherever you buy it. If you have some questions, problems, you can't get it working right, you know, reach out to me. I'll talk, I'll help you see what we can do to get it, to make sure it works. Cause like I said, this is super easy, but if you got a problem, let me know. I'll help you. I'd be, I'd be prefer to help you than have you grumbling going, he said it was easy and it's not working. It's probably something minor, something you skipped, something maybe I didn't focus enough on to show you, to make sure you understood. Um, everybody's different. So thank you again.